Welcome back to Mark and I's Solomon CEO Project. I cannot believe we are already on video number three where Mark is going to break down Proverbs 11, 26 that says, The people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. In this video, Mark is going to break down King Solomon's what I call art of selling. In Proverbs 11, 26, it holds so much value about the blessings of selling that I would have never been able to understand it without the way Mark is about to break it down for you. Mark has allowed me to swipe one of his private videos where he spoke at a private mastermind to people that paid thousands of dollars just to be in attendance and now you get to see it for 100% for free. And also don't forget to sign up for our live webinar before or after you watch this video. The wisdom that Mark will be bringing you in our live webinar will blow away anything that you have seen on any of these videos on this website. So be blessed and enjoy what I call King Solomon's Art of Selling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, you know, I'm getting to the point where I can tell my story now without crying most of the time. And, uh, and I don't know if that's good or bad. Jeffrey Combs, one of my mentors, told me, because he, he speaks all the time. Raise your hand if you're familiar with who Jeffrey is, right? Paid him two grand for coaching for four sessions when I had no money. When I paid him, I had $98 left left. And my friends were like, why are you paying? It averaged out to be like, I forgot how much a minute, but it was like 20 bucks a minute or something. It just, it, things got, it was just crazy. And my friends are like, you're paying this guy 20 whatever a minute. <laughs> and I said, I have got to break through and I will do anything. I will do anything to break through to the other side. You ever feel like that? Like, I will do anything. I am so hungry. One of the biggest misconceptions you may possess, and any, look at it like any misconception that you hold is that it's physically stored in your body, okay? If you have a belief that's wrong, it's actually, it's, it's physical. It's electrical, and it's vibrational, and it's stored in your body. And success, by and large, is the removal of those, one of the removals you may, you may have to come into, well, for me, let's just share my story. For me, the, one of the biggest things is, you know, you got to make it easy for people, right? Um, you got to tell people how easy it is. You got to tell people, you know, right? Because people want easy. Is that fairly true, right? People fairly want easy. Um, but there's a global belief that people won't work that hard, right? And, you know, the success rate is so low that, if you're pitching your deal and they're joining you and then they fail, you know, people are lazy. If you hold that somewhere electrically in your body and you believe that in this industry, you're going to hold back big time. What I believed, which was a little switch, was that people will do anything, anything to succeed. They will stay up late at night. They will work maybe through the night if necessary. They will wake up earlier they will buy stuff they can't afford, travel to places that are out of their way, that cost their time away from their families. They will do anything humanly in their scope to succeed. And when I held that electrically in my body and I vibrate that, guess who starts showing up in my life? People like Crystal Curtis who will do anything to succeed. You think Aaron Rashkin and Sophia, you think they'll do anything? They will do anything to succeed. I had to do everything to succeed. And one of the things that's really key, well, Clint, he spent 40 hours on a campaign, 40 hours writing. You see, this is a piece of direct mail that he mailed to friends and family okay, on a product. This is all handwritten, hand-highlighted, 40 hours of writing. Clint, you said your hand, like, hurt? <laughs> But people are lazy, right? If you hold that as a belief, do you hear what I'm saying? Do you feel what I'm saying? So when I got started, I didn't have a lot of connections. I didn't know a lot of people. I, didn't, I was just in a bad place. But I, and I didn't even have a lot of money for like books on prosperity or things like that. I had an old copy of Think and Grow Rich, and I would read that over and over and over and over. But I remembered my pastor when I was in eighth grade told me about King Solomon and he was the wisest man this and that and the other thing and so I started going to King Solomon's writings and I'd read him 
And I would imagine, what if I took this little chunk of wisdom, this little proverb, and I flushed out the wisdom exactly in my life? Like I did, I somehow was able to translate this ancient little code thing, make it a part of me, and do it, basically apply it today, you know, like thousands of years later. So I have a couple of these little codes I want to share that had huge impact on me. Permission to share them? Okay, so here's, here's one of them, and I'm not going to write it out verbatim, but basically it says, uh, he who holds back, okay, he who holds back the grain, okay, the people curse. But, and I know you can all read that, but there is a blessing on the head of him who sells it. And I would read each, each phrase, literally, and I'd say, okay, now, even if it doesn't jump out at me, there has to be some kind of applicable wisdom from this ancient, divinely gifted uh, juice here that I can apply. And <laughs> can anyone read even a single word in it? But here's what I took. I thought to myself, what this verse means basically is you have a farmer who holds back grain. Why? To manipulate price so it goes up. The people are cursing him. They want, because what? That's bread. It turns into beer, turns into flowers, it, it, flour, turn, baking, everything. So he's holding back to manipulate, the, to manipulate the system, and the people are cursing him. But there's a blessing on he who sells it. And I thought to myself, sales, at least growing up, in my mind, sales had what? Sales had a little what to it, a little, little icky, a little kind of dirty, kind of bleh, right? So I started thinking, the people curse, so what does the blessing mean? It means the people will bless you by the act of selling. You, not only you become blessed, obviously, but the people will bless you because they're getting a deal, right? So what I did was, I started to imagine that the stuff I sold not only blessed me, so there was a, uh, but there's a blessing on the head of him who sells it. So watch this crazy thing. This is a biblical tie-in from the very early in the scripture when it says, you will earn your, your bread by the sweat of your brow, right, by the sweat of your face. Now here in the development of this whole tale in the scripture, now we've got the sweat is literally a blessing is now covering. So the sweat translates into blessing. Isn't that a beautiful picture? This, you are wet with blessing. From the top of your head, it's streaming down you. It's complete. And, and what happens, it's the sweat of selling. Isn't this crazy? The money, there's a lot of money out there. You have to work at it. You have to sweat for the sale sometimes. Sometimes it's very automatic. Sometimes it shows up. You don't even know how it showed up, but it showed up. But guess what? When that shows up, it was because you sweated earlier in marketing. At some point, when Rash, you have those auto applications coming in, there, you might, he might be not sweating at that moment, but there was a time where he was learning the copy, and he was... Ah, Grinding it out. And when you get to a point, so for me, how I said, how I, how I beautified this whole truth to me was that I was called to this sweat and that this sweat translates into beauty and it, it's going to drench me. Now, this was at a point where I qualified for welfare. I was so stressed, so, so intensely stressed at one point that my little Isaac, you saw the video, where's JT? Video's touching, and I'd say I'm a pretty decent dad. People tell me I'm a great dad, I believe I'm a pretty good dad, so with that said, remember that when I tell you this next story. <laughs> <laughs> little Isaac, I was calling leads, no one was buying, no one was going to my website, and he was crying as like a two-year-old does, you know, two, three, and, I, I remember I wanted to take him, and I held him, and I had to hold back from almost crushing his, his throat. I was so 
angry. I wanted to pick him up and throw him against the wall. That's the, that's the place I was in when I started this business. I cannot describe to you how desperate, how painful. I was erratic, thinking like that. I didn't do anything. I was there. But I squeeze it. I remember thinking, like, I want to take. Some of you probably haven't been there. And thank God you haven't. But we had nothing in the bank. I was. We were, I remember I was getting as many credit cards in one day as I could. I was applying so, you know, it didn't affect the credit so that the application could get through before they could check. And I was playing all this credit card game, and I was, I was selling everything. I was telling Shannon she can't put so much milk in the bowl because we can't feed the kids. You know, we can't, we can't put that much milk in a, in a bowl because they don't need that much milk, right? Neighbors are buying us groceries. And here I am with my little King Solomon thing saying this, this blessing is going to be so complete it's going to cover every area of my life. Okay. And that picture, that video with my son uh, that JT was talking about, that was in Trump's penthouse, right? So I, ha- I hosted a party for my team in Trump's penthouse. It was just two or three years later. Isn't that crazy? And here's where it came from. Emotionally, I said... I am going to love selling. I'm going to love the act of selling. I'm going to love the reception of money. The people that buy my stuff are going to love the reception. They are going to bless me for getting the deal. Right? And if there's even a modicum, even a trace anywhere in here, in here, that you're uneasy about selling, that's electrically held in your body, you have to think about getting... How can I get that away from me? And here's the thing. Selling, you have somebody here, and this is something called the future self, and what your product is, is a portal. It's a portal to their future self. They're fat, you sell weight loss. This is what they want, right? They're struggling, they're stressed, they want wealth. This is what they want to be. Your product, nobody wants to buy a powdery shake that tastes like chalk. Nobody wants to take little capsules and throw them in their mouth and swallow them with pills, right? You're selling this portal to get people to hear. And if you don't think that this portal is actually the portal, you're going to resist selling it, aren't you? Because if you say, here's my information product, and literally you are here, you don't know what you're doing. In information, it's a how-to situation. It's a mindset, it's a how-to. You are right here, and you don't know what you're doing. If you step into my portal, you can have this, and be this, and think this, and know this, and do this. If you came from that space, how could you resist marketing the portal? See what I'm saying? How could you do it? I take really expensive vitamins. I don't even market them right now. But I had a friend who, he said, he's my age. He's probably 30, 40 pounds heavier than I, my, I am. His, his face is hurting. He, he's got this and that. And I said, you know, when I started taking full-on optimal vitamins, I quit aching like my feet used to hurt. I used to be thirstier than I am. It, it, it just changed my whole life. I sleep better, everything. And to me, the vitamins were a portal, right? Is this marketing situation that you're in, you've, my, my point is this, the people want this, and they actually want this, and they're willing to spend anything, and they're willing to do anything to get to this. And if you, if you don't hold that belief, you're going to attract Somebody that, yeah, but no. Yeah, it sounds good, but no. Because you're not resonating at this level. Do you see what I'm saying? You have to really believe that what you're pitching is the portal. Are we getting value yet? Okay. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like we're touching some things. Vitamins. (laughs) Feeling good. I'm feeling good because of those vitamins. (laughs) Just kidding. All right, so here's another, here's another thing with, GR, or with uh, 
not with GRN, but <laughs> I said I was going to talk about GRN today, but I'm not. But let me, I, I'm going to say a word or two real quick about Clint's situation. So he mailed this out, and this is a retail product, right? Great savings, 90% off Expedia, you know, travel, just incredible stuff. But he sent out 162 of these personally hand-addressed. Did you put a starburst in there? What did you put? You put a starburst in each thing. It's glossy. This is thick. He had nine people respond, five, nine to ten people respond. Five people said yes, but not now. Now, what if in this, I'm, can I chew on you a little bit? Great on you a little bit? Because um, he makes $3,250 per yes. He had five yeses and zero transactions. What if he would have unleashed the selling beast that is the future you, right? And so you got the yes, then what did you do? Yes, but I don't have the money. Yes, but not now. Here's a little fact. There's nobody on this planet right now, little reality check, there's not a single person on planet Earth that is actively, consciously thinking Tomorrow, tonight, the next week, the following week, I'm going to pay you money for something. There's not one person who's thinking, I'm going to wake up and pay you money. It's not in their plans. In fact, at their conscious level, guess what's going on in their mind? I'm going to spend less money. So this is what we're up against. I'm going to spend less. So you're not just, you see the situation? Now, Clint, what did you do? There's another verse in Solomon that says, a righteous man falls seven times and gets up. You get, okay, no might be one. It's a no. A no to mean if it's the right person, right? Did you fight for the sale? Or did you just say, okay? And that's why there's no money. You have to deserve the sale. You have to deserve the sale. Deserve comes from de, of, serve, service, of service. Yes, you like it. Tell me, what did you like best about it? Where do you plan on going on it? You know what? It's called assumption of selling. Let's hop on a webinar real quick. I'll take you inside this product, and I'll start showing it to you. Blah, blah, blah. You said yes, but not now because you don't have the money. If you did know how to come up with the money, how would we come up with the money? If you did know how to come up with the money, how would you come up with the money? I have closed hundreds of thousands of dollars on that line. If you did know how to come up with the money, how would you come up with the money? I guess I'd borrow it from my dad. I think we got an answer. Borrow it from your dad. Now, if I believed that I was selling a bad portal, that would be mean and dirty, wouldn't it, for me to do that? Let me tell you a little story. There was this chick. She was getting married. She saw our product. At the time, it was 3000 Now it's 5000 She said yes. Guess what followed? There was a word, but. This word, but. This word, but, follows around all the time. And the more buts you have in your life, the more default when you say something, and then there's a nice little but that follows, the more you will see that reoccur in your business. Yes, but, yes, but, yes, but, yeah, but, 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 after, after the 4th of July. Yeah, I'm going to do that, but let's just let the summer slow. Let's chill for the summer. Um, you know what? I, I'm going to do it, but my daughter's getting married in August, and we're very busy, okay? I'm going to do it, but what? But American Idol's on, right? But, 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 but. Did I have a point? I was going somewhere with this. What was I talking about? Oh, this bride. She's getting her wedding. She has no money. And her husband cannot stand this industry. And she's been toying around buying stupid biz ops and being in MLMs for months and months and months. And he's getting pissed. This is his fi fiance. So... Eric, my boy, calls me and says, this chick is in, but she's getting married this weekend. They don't really have the money. She doesn't want to piss her fiancé off. 
I said, did she say yes? Then collect the money. Okay? That was the directive. Collect the money. Okay? And that's, that's, that's a transition that some of you have to click, that it's not about people watching the video. It's not about people being excited. It's not about people saying yes. It's about collecting the money, completing the transaction. Okay? Nod with me a little bit. Until you ring the cash register, you have just sweat. The second the cash register rings, now all of a sudden, that glisten turns to a blessing. And you, the feeling of achievement is more powerful than the experience of receiving money. Did you know that? When you break through, you will feel better that you, about breaking through than about receiving money in your bank. And that's key. So if that's true, what do you teach people? How to achieve. Back to this chick. I say collect the money. Because she wanted it, right? She wanted it. She saw it. She wanted it. Well, she borrowed money from her parents' credit cards, didn't tell her fiancé, made the $3,000 transaction a few days before her wedding, which they were paying for. That little girl is named Michelle Pesco Solito. Anybody heard of her? She's done multiple six figures her first year. She was able to retire her husband from his corporate America, and now they're both full-time. They take so many vacations. Their life has completely changed. What if I didn't believe in that little code I shared earlier? What if I didn't believe in the portal do you see the difference? I believe that the portal is actually the portal. I believe that it is a blessing for her to go figure out how to come up with multiple thousands of dollars, adding on top, heaping on top, debt upon her debt, so that she can pay me money. I believe that's a good thing. And what if I didn't? What would be their story? I, I don't know. Maybe she would have broke through in her own time. But do you get the moral of the story? Collect the transaction for the right person. People need help to pay. They need help. Take them on. It literally, like if we would have fought for those five yeses and you would have had two of them, it would have been 6400 bucks, 6500 bucks. Would that have been a little bit of a life? Your business, right? You'd be sitting right there with a glow. Like, you, you glow, you're a good looking guy, Glenn. You'd be better looking right now. <laughs> There'd just be a little extra pop, isn't there? Isn't there? I'll tell you, one of the things, you want to know what can really truly save your marriage? More money. You want to know what can truly, I mean, it's not the only thing. Without wisdom, you're screwed, it'll only ruin you. If you have wisdom, though, because here's what money does. Money, money can buy you that date that you don't take because you don't have money. It can supply, I took, I can't describe to you the power of with a wife with four kids, when she has a house cleaner come every week, terrorize through our house, and everything is sparkling. And then we have a nanny just for that morning watch the other kids so she can go get her pedicure, and then we meet for sushi, and then we come home to a sparkling, clean, perfectly beautiful house. Do you think that saves the marriage? Are you kidding me? <laughs> come on. People always down money. I, I really like it. I just, <laughs> I just can't even begin to describe it to you, my, my love affair with this situation. Now, if you love it to all other things, you know, you're, that's no good. Let me give you a case. Glenn, Glenn in our car when I, I got on the phone. This guy's from Australia, and he said, I'm going to buy platinum. Now, that's 3250 bucks. He said, I'm going to buy platinum, um, but I really want you to have credit, and I'd, I'd like to be directly with you. I'm in a moment here. There is this little space where literally this much, this much of a conversation Hey, you know, that's, that's really cool, and do you, are you sure you really want to really work with me? Yeah, absolutely. I'd rather work with you instead of Glenn. 
Okay, well, that's fine. Here's what we, we can't give you Glenn's bonuses, but I'll replace those bonuses with my bonuses, and we really should just keep it on the down low because Glenn would be pretty upset if you joined with me instead of him. Okay? That much of a conversation, and I have $3,250 additional in my pocket with no integrity. Do you see the deal? So yes money all day, yes money. You have to fall in love with the residual effects of money, not the actual income of it, but the residuals of what's going on. So here's the residual. Here's what actually happened. Um, Robert, that's awesome. I'm, I coach Glenn, so you're getting both of us basically. And this is Glenn's, so we'll be signing directly with him and you get all the bonuses, it's all good. Do you see, that little difference is the reason I'm eight figures versus struggling five figures, scheming around, scamming, getting money. That's the difference. That conversation is the difference. But what's the residual? See, I didn't lose any money on that transaction because that wasn't mine to begin with. That was an agreement. So Glenn makes the sale. Thirty-two fifty for a guy helps the cause when you pop one of those, right? So that's in his pocket. I say, Glenn, interview this guy. Glenn does a quick interview, puts it on our Facebook thing, mails it out to his list. Glenn's social proof, hey, Hoverson, you do, you do a joint venture with Hoverson, it's game, it's lights out. So now I talk to Chris, I talk to these, hey, we did this thing with Glenn, Glenn made 32 with 30 people, he made three grand, let's do another one. Boom, got another one. Brenda, got another one. Adam, got another one. Eric, got another one. You know how many of these I have lined up for my team now? Because I fell in love with the after fact. So my little... Um, tirade on how much I love money. Don't minimize, don't not hear how much that, how much, how much you having money will change your life. It will radically change your life in ways that you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine, but it's the wisdom that you get. It's the wisdom that makes it really fun. I had a kid, this was just a couple days ago, calls me. Hey, Mark, my dad called me and asked, will you support my Eagle Scout project? What's your project? I'm building a gazebo outside the church so people can do meditation and weddings and big flowers and stuff. Now, I could have said, yeah, yeah, how much is it? It's five grand, all right? Write the check, feel like a stud, I saved the day. But I'm not, but you know what I did instead? I said, what's your plan to get the five grand? See, I want to impart wisdom to this kid. It's 20 times more valuable for me to give him wisdom with some money at the end. My goal is to give him so much wisdom, I don't send him a penny. Did you know that? So I said, what's your plan to get the five grand? Who else are you talking to? He listed a few people. I said, is the church doing any offerings? Church is doing offerings. I said, do you have a, do you have a visual printout with color and the flowers so that the whole church can see what this is gonna look like? No, you gotta do that. You gotta mail, you gotta have the church on their penny mail it to everybody and say, this is the deal. I want a picture of you. This is the Eagle Scout project. When is it due? When are you gonna start building? Late in the fall. I said, okay, you do that, you do X, you do A, B, C, you do A, B, B, and C, and then hit me up in the fall with what's left, and we'll see. I have a feeling there's not gonna be anything left. But I gave him something a lot more precious than money, didn't I? Writing that check would have just ripped him off. Isn't that crazy? And at the very end, what I'll say, let's say he's got a grand left. I'll say I'll match a dollar for dollar anything you can generate. Anything you generate. You generate 500, I give you 500. I'll match it all the way to 1,000. Benjamin Franklin invented the matching bonus, by the way. Just read it in a biography. But do you see, are you capturing a little bit of my heart here? It's the game of, it's the game of wisdom. Falling in love with wisdom, that's really the Okay, there's this verse that, um, and I can't tell you how much this stuff changed my life. Um, ugh, crazy. There's this verse that says, a lazy man um, has no game, uh, a lazy man sees no game to roast, okay? Meaning, no game to hunt, sorry. A lazy man sees no game to hunt, and then it says, but a diligent man sees precious wealth in the land. So get this. This is water, trees. The lazy man looks at the landscape and says, I'm not even going hunting because there's nothing out there. Now follow this because this is, gets a really crazy in how you, how you resonate. 
There's no game out there. The diligent man sees precious wealth in the land. He looks at the land, and his eyes are like, oh my gosh, there is so much money to be value to be created. Because the other thing with money is it's, it's a symptom. It's symptomatic. It's symptomatic. To cre- it's a value. You create value. You add value. And money is symptomatic. And the money is always going to be in less proportion to the value. I think about moments like this, and I think about what the stories are going to be out of this room. And they're already, there's already a lots of little germs of success that are coming up. And the next time we meet, I want to hear your story. I want to hear it badly. Okay? I love it. Thank you so much for watching that video. That is nothing in comparison to what we're going to bring you on our live webinar. So go ahead and sign down below, and we cannot wait to answer your questions live, bring you even more wisdom live, and Mark has got some amazing, amazing stuff to bring you. So I hope you don't miss out on this live webinar. Go down there and sign up for the live webinar right now, and we cannot wait to see you and answer all the questions you may have had as you watch these videos. Thank you so much for being here, wanting to be a person of excellence, wanting to be a leader, wanting to back more people in your lives and really embody these principles so you can go out there and really make a difference in this world. So go ahead and sign up for that live webinar and we cannot wait to see you soon.